Alert. Central banks sell US debt at the fastest pace ever. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. We're going to get into this right away. This is absolutely very important. Out of the Wall Street Journal, central banks around the world are selling U.S. government bonds at the fastest pace on record. The most dramatic shift in the $12.8 trillion treasury market since the financial crisis. This is the moment that we've been waiting for. What will happen to the U.S. debt? See, they are able to keep up this system simply because there's always a buyer. But what happens when things change? Sales by China, Russia, Brazil, and Taiwan are the latest sign of an emerging market slowdown that is threatening to spill over into the U.S. economy. Previously, all four were large purchasers of the U.S. debt. So things are certainly changing right now. Obviously, China being one of those. I've obviously covered Russia and Brazil as well. Seems like Taiwan is part of that too. Many investors say that the reversal in central bank treasury purchases stands to increase price swings in the long run. It could pave the way for higher yields when the global economy is on firmer footing. This is a time when this never happens. Of course, when everything is so wonderful, then we will take care of our problems. Well, it doesn't work like that. I'll show you further examples of this in a moment. This is the chart you need to see, and you can tell right here visually that this hasn't happened since even before the financial crisis, and it is a terrible amount as well. So at least in this regard, it actually became worse than during the financial crisis. Something very serious to note. There was also this issue only about a year and a bit ago. And now it seems to be taking into overdrive. This is the net foreign official purchases of U.S. Treasury notes and bonds, 12-month rolling sums. What you need to understand is that if China, Russia, Taiwan, and who knows who else are buying less U.S. debt, who is going to buy it up? Well, that's obviously a rhetorical question. Let's look at this. The world's leading finance ministers agreed on Friday to change the rules on taxing profits and warn the multinational companies to no longer use their size and international pressure to dodge taxes. This is a completely fraudulent article. It's propaganda. Out of the Financial Times, under the rules, companies such as Starbucks, Amazon, Google are going to find it harder to concentrate their profits in low-tax countries and tax havens, a shift that promises to raise up to $250 billion a year in extra tax revenue. Basically, what we have here is no different than any others. If they're not able to make their corporate profits by keeping their money overseas, then they're simply going to have to take it from the customer. That means increased fees for these customers, or you simply have other types of actions that take place. This is shipping jobs overseas. This is firing employees and increasing productivity, as they like to call it. You can't mess with these type of corporations in this way because taxing them attempting to tax them even if that's what you are doing probably not but let's just say that if they are going to tax them they're simply going to pass it on to the customer or fire a whole bunch of people lower gas prices means no social security increase next year that's right if your gas prices are affected by this perhaps you drive or perhaps not but if they are affected you're not gonna get your increase in social security and this is the kind of thing that they've been playing around with for quite some time as far as i've been researching it and this is think of it the cpi or the cost of living and essentially what we have here is the government stepping in and deciding what should or should not increase in price based on market value at the time. It doesn't work like that in the 
recent times, however, it just goes to show you how everything is very fraudulent. This article talks about Obamacare and how the premiums are increasing. So if those are increasing, then what about your food prices? That's what's important, and they never factor that in. This is from my book, and basically I'm talking about inflation. The Fed uses what they call core inflation, which excludes energy and food prices. By definition, this is intentional propaganda. That's something you can't deny. If you're not going to include energy and food, then the other ones are small in comparison. This is the Federal Reserve, this is central banks. They go ahead and use all of these fraudulent numbers to provide them to the public. Look here, there's more to discuss. In Lima, Peru, the IMF is meeting here and they're saying a few interesting things. Talk of the Federal Reserve's first rate increases almost in almost a decade tends to send many investors into a frenzy for the world's central bankers. It is increasingly likely to elicit sighs of resignation. Important stuff, but I need to move into the last part. If it is a case that the emerging markets have had taken on too much debt, there will be a day of reckoning. Delaying an interest rate hike does not necessarily address that issue. The whole world is waiting for the U.S. to increase this. Central banks around the world, in fact, because they're simply waiting for that moment so that they can then increase theirs. But very few have done it so far. Many have gone into the negative, and this is very serious. The IMF is divided, it seems. Sometimes you look at the articles and they show that they are very strict, but other times they're very Keynesian. So, this is what we have to look at here out of Bloomberg. There's no shame in waiting. That's the message for the U.S. Federal Reserve's officials contemplating an interest rate increase this year as the world's financial chiefs and central bankers gather in Lima. So when you have a bunch of these elite, whether it's for Davos, whether it's for the UN or anything, any type of these meetings. They're always discussing how they can steal your money. Our recommendation is for the Fed to wait until there are tangible signs that inflation is really rising toward the objective. That's not going to happen. Let me just warn you in advance. And then we'll end off with some humor. Instead of the Financial Times, Wall Street's biggest banks are beginning to build their defenses against downturns signaling an end to the steady thinning of reserves that has helped boost profits in the past five years. They're going to cut from their corporate profits and then give it to you and I. If you believe that, you really need to sit down and take a look at this. They're never going to take from their corporate profits. This right here is... You know what? There's no other way to, to describe it, but it, it's a lie. It's beyond even propaganda. The bankers have reduced their safety nets since the financial crisis. It's gotten much worse. Derivatives are larger based on many reports that I've seen. And we're looking at the worst of the worst. We need to hope that this doesn't continue, but it just seems like it's constant and never ending if you found this video informative please give me a thumbs up last but not least if you found the video informative i know you'll find my book the money gps even more informative head over to amazon you can use the look inside feature which allows you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it take care